NFL.com's Chad Ruda, the Ruga, released a four-round mock draft, four-round NFL mock draft, and we are going to do a super flex rookie mock draft based on the draft capital and the landing spots that he provided to us. And I've got to say, this is the sexiest NFL draft that I have come across, the sexiest NFL mock draft as it relates to fantasy, okay? The landing spots are beautiful. The draft capital is beautiful. Everything is just beautiful. Looking like some fucking dinner rolls out here. I have absolutely no idea why I bought this shirt. It's one of those shirts that I'm like, ah, that kind of looks fun online. And then I buy it. I'm like, I don't want a single fucking person to see me wearing this out in public. What are we doing? What are we doing, Nikki baby? All right. Uh, Y'all heard it. So we're going to go through like three rounds probably. Maybe we'll get into the fourth round, but there's only four rounds of the NFL mock draft. So there's not that many players. I don't even know if there's a full 48. Y'all know what it is. We're just going to talk through it. We're just going to rip through it quickly. We're not doing like a draft on sleeper with other people. We just want to get bike into some action here. So tuck our shirts in. I'm going to be honest. I kind of wish this, this was on the back, you know, like just walking down the street. It's like, why the fuck would this guy just have a dinner rolls logo on the, on his back it would be fire. Absolute fire case. All right. <laughs> do this the link to chad reuter's mock draft will be the first link in the description i'll pin it in the comments as well if you want to follow along or take a look at it afterwards i'll basically make the fantasy pick tell you where the player went in the draft and i'll tell you who he went to and as always this will probably never change for me first pick is mr Bijan robinson he goes 12th overall to houston so we've seen a lot of mocks where houston takes a quarterback and then takes his future wide receiver one this was a little bit of a spin zone action here we went Bijan as the 12th overall pick and that just means this is not like a oh no Bijan and Damian Pierce are in a committee this is you draft a running back 12th overall he is your workhorse he is your guy for the future Houston low-key starting to put together re-signing the pieces a nice little offensive line there the QB if they draft a QB and in this draft they took Bryce Young they draft a QB and he hits this will end up being a really good spot for Bijan in a year or two so Bijan's my 101 CJ Stroud was the first quarterback off the board in this mock he went 101 to Carolina. He will be my 102 in this draft. Uh, CJ Stroud is going to be the number one pick in the NFL draft. I would put I would put everything I own. I'll put this hat on the line. I'll put my dinner roll shirt on the line. I'll put it all. If you think otherwise, I would love to make a side bet with you. But CJ Stroud is going to be the number one pick overall in the draft. He will be probably my QB one in fantasy for the time being. Bryce Young goes second overall to Houston. He will be the 103 in this mock draft. Them two are bike to bike in every sense of the word Anthony Richardson actually goes number three here to Indianapolis so he will be the 104 for me I get it I know I know Anthony Richardson is a high upside player Anthony Richardson is really good at running Anthony Richardson will develop all these things that's cool just give me a quarterback that I can trust that I know doesn't really need development that's Bryce Young that's CJ Stroud just give me a nice top 15 asset at the QB position and I feel good about that in a super flex league number five I actually jumped around and I've normally been taking Will Levis as the fifth pick in most of the Superflex mocks, but he goes to Minnesota at the 10th pick. So he's going to have to at least sit behind Kirk for a year. I jumped him with Jackson Smith and Jigba. JSN was the first wide receiver drafted in this draft. He goes 15th overall to the Green Bay Packers. He's my wide receiver one. It's not close. Um, for, a lo for those of y'all that you know are really deep into rookies, one of the best resources out there on the market right now is Matt Harmon's reception perception. If you don't know what that is at this point, you probably haven't played any fucking dynasty. If you haven't played any dynasty, you should join a league. We are setting them up for you in our discord. Absolutely free. Okay. So there's a link down below to join the BDGE fantasy discord. And in there, we're setting up dynasty leagues for you guys. Absolutely free. Obviously you got to pay the buying and shit, but we're doing all the work for you behind the scenes, buttering the rolls so we could serve them to you. Okay. So join a dynasty league and then You'll know about reception perception, even though he does it during redraft anyways, too. But JSN rated out really good. Like, he basically takes a success rate versus man versus press and against zone. And we all know he's really good at zone and sitting down in the zones, and that's like his bread and butter. No pun intended. But he was actually awesome against man, too. Uh, JSN's going to be a stud at the next level. So I'm not overthinking this. I actually am a little bit higher on Jordan Love than I think most people are. So I kind of really, really, really like this. Christian Watson and JSN could not be more different as players and skill sets. So you can give me JSN as the slot guy, a secondary outside wide receiver. Uh, love the draft capital, love the landing spot. He is five for me. 
I'll go back to Will Levis at six here, so he's the 106 in this draft. Will Levis in Minnesota is interesting. Obviously, he'll sit a year, but if he's a quarterback in year two, then he'll have had a nice little time to develop and learn the system, and he gets to play with fucking Justin Jefferson. There's not much more that needs to be said there. Jordan Addison goes 21st overall to the Chargers. So he's now linked up with Justin Herbert for his rookie contract. I love that. So I took him seventh overall in this rookie draft. So these these landing spots are so fun. They're like high-powered offenses, cool landing spots. They're ones that we have not seen yet. Addison going to L.A. would be amazing. It would give them you know, some somewhat of a deep threat, a speedster down the field, even though he's obviously underwhelming athletically, but love the landing spot for him. Number eight, this is the first time I've seen a mock draft that Hendon Hooker goes in the first round. He goes 30th overall to Las Vegas. So in this mock, the Raiders took Christian Gonzalez, the absolute fucking phenomenal cornerback out of Oregon, with their seventh overall pick, traded up to pick 30 to take Hendon Hooker. If Hendon Hooker goes in the first round, he deserves to be an early pick in Superflex rookie drafts, okay? So he's my 108 here, fifth quarterback off the board, but gets first-round capital. I'm okay letting him sit there and seeing what he becomes because I'm not overly in love with like the rest of the other players that went in the first round. So we actually dipped into the second round for the ninth overall pick. So at 109, we took Jameer Gibbs, who went to Philadelphia, 38th pick overall. So he dips into the second round, but you can't ask for a better landing spot for a running back behind a phenomenal offensive line, behind a team. And this is, you know, one of the concerns with Gibbs, obviously, is him being undersized. But like how big of a chunk of a committee does he get? We've seen Philadelphia running an extremely successful running back by committee. You know, so that makes me excited. It's like even if Gibbs is in a committee there in Philadelphia, he will be used correctly because they know how to run a committee there. Get second round draft capital down at the 109 for me. That might be too low. Some other people might take him at five or six. You might take him over Jordan Addison. You might take him over Hendon Hooker. Where where are you taking Gibbs there? If he goes 38th overall to Philadelphia, are you taking him all the way up at five? Do you take him over Will Levis, who went to Minnesota? I don't know. I'm taking him at nine and I'm taking Dalton Kincaid at 10. Dalton Kincaid goes to Dallas. 26 overall pick, so first round capital, replacing Dalton Schultz. Going into an offense that badly needs pass catchers, right? They don't have Mark Cooper, obviously. Uh, Michael Gallup's coming back, but they don't really have anything outside of CeeDee Lamb. Um, it's going to be a lot less pass-heavy, I think, with just Mike McCarthy and no more Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore going over to L.A. Chargers, another reason I love Jordan Addison here. Uh, Don Kincaid, my favorite pass catcher in – maybe my favorite pass catcher overall in this draft class, but definitely my favorite pass catching tight end. So he goes to Dallas, 26 overall. He is my 110. Michael Mayer right behind him goes to Cincinnati, another beautiful landing spot with Hayden Hurst out of the way. He goes 28th since he first-round draft capital. He will be my 111 in this draft. And to round out the first round – uh, Jalen Hyatt goes 25th overall to Kansas City. So Hyatt's a dude that I'm not like overly excited about as a prospect. Again, he wasn't someone that I was like crazy in love with. When I watched the film, all I saw was elite speed, but a ton of broken plays. Not like a phenomenal route runner, just so many broken secondary plays that led to a ton of production for him. He went crazy. Blitnikoff winner, 1,500 yards, whatever, 15 touchdowns. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head, 1,300 yards. So much of it was just broken defense. Looking at Matt Harmon's reception perception, his success rate versus man and press and zone not great he still has a lot of development to go but you put him with Patrick Mahomes they lose Nicole Hardman right they they don't really have anything there in terms of Travis Kelsey who's like 30 fucking four years old at this point so Kincaid Michael Mayer Jalen Hyatt round out the first round for me dipping into the second round I think you could absolutely make the argument I think a lot of people like Zay Flowers more than they like Jalen Hyatt as a prospect Say Flowers gets first round capital, goes to Seattle. So 27th overall, wide receiver four in the class. He is my 201. See, this is beautiful. Like, if you got the 201 and you get a first round Zay Flowers, that, I mean, you can't ask for something better for fantasy. Better prospect, but the landing spot's a little bit iffy. I guess my question or my concern is like with Tyler Lock and DK Metcalf, by the time Zay Flowers gets his shot, is Geno Smith still the quarterback? Do they have a young quarterback? Like, what what's the deal there, right? It might take a year or two for him to really get into his role, get into his zone. So that's like one of my concerns, but I like the landing spot. I love the draft capital, obviously. So he's my 13th overall pick, Quentin Johnson. So this feels super generous because he goes 33rd overall to the Houston Texans. Wide receiver five in the class. He's my 14th pick. So the 202. In a lot of drafts, in a lot of mock drafts I've seen by experts and analysis that have Bryce Young going two to Houston and then at 12, they have either JSN or Jordan Addison or Quentin Johnson. So for Quentin Johnson to fall to the first pick or the second pick of round two feels generous, but would be sexy as hell. 
So he's my 14th overall pick. Even if you don't believe in him, he's not a guy with like super strong hands. I think he's got a lot of development to do as a as a prospect, but the upside is crazy. So him down here, I would love that at the 202. At the 203, we got Josh Downs going to Dallas. Second round, 58th overall pick. So a little bit further down the second round, but in terms of like prospects, love Josh Downs as a player. And I like the landing spot because again, they don't have a ton to work with there. Now outside of CeeDee Lamb and... Dalton Kincaid so they have these young rookies getting paired up with Dak love Josh Downs he was an absolute winner in reception perception great contested catch guy can win versus man versus zone got the fucking dog in him um so I'll take him at the 203 at the 204 we're actually going to skip a lot of players in the second round and move down to the third round where Zach Charbonnet went to Tennessee third round 72nd pick overall probably means he's the heir apparent to Derrick Henry Derrick Henry will be under contract for one more year do they move him if they make a pick like this? Possibly. We've heard trade rumors about Derrick Henry. What does our offense look like? Terrible, but it sounds like Zach Charbonnet will be, you know, the starting running back, the workhorse running back next year. So I'm okay dipping into the third round here. Third round draft capital for running back is good. As long as you go day two, I'm happy with that. Right after him at the 17th overall pick, so we're talking about the 205, Tajay Spears goes to the New Orleans Saints. This I love this landing spot for him. I'm not, like, overly excited about Tajay Spears as a prospect because he came in one – small but also kind of not he's not slow all right but his combine did him no favors 510 201 so 201 pounds just tips that 200 pound mark 459 so he ran a 454 we just that 0.05 459 40 at the pro day burst score is great the burst is there his agility score really really poor as well in the 28th percentile all this per player profiler so i'm about to do this undersized and not overly athletic still like him as a player i still think he has you know a lot to like about him kamara definitely gonna have a suspension at some point they got nothing else really in that running back room and they've always heavily utilized their running backs they have Derek Carr, so the offense should be more stabilized i like tajay spears here third round 17th pick the 205 after that we have a name that we have not spoken about much on this channel at pick 18 the 206 jonathan mingo goes as the wide receiver six in this class to my Atlanta Falcons. Now, Jonathan Mingo, for those of y'all that don't know, is just a wildebeest of a player. Six foot one, 226 pounds, ran a 446, which puts him in the 96 percentile for weight adjusted speed score. I went back and watched some film on Jonathan Mingo a few days ago, and the dude is he's big, he's fast, he's athletic, he can move. I think his separation skills and his like technical skills as a wide receiver certainly need to be improved, but he's got a lot to like about him as a prospect. And you know, th that size, that speed, that combination is a really good building point right now. He didn't really put up, you know, like breakout numbers until his fourth and final season, 21 year old at Old Miss, but his combination of size athleticism um, is enough to get me excited. He's not like, he's not like one of those dudes who's only size and speed. He's not, you know, Brashad Perriman. He's not Miles Boykin where the only thing he does is be athletic on the field. He's actually like a pretty good receiver that I feel like has a nice foundation to be. I mean, if they put him in the slot, I think he could do a ton of fucking damage. He's got breakaway speed. He's not great at like separating down the field, but he can make plays down the field if you give him the chance to. He's a tough fucking player. He's tough to bring down. Good yak, like really, really strong with the ball in his hand. So don't hate it. It's just uh, interesting because it's the highest we've seen him go in a mock draft before. So he will be my 18th overall pick. And the player drafted two spots before him will be the next tight end off the board. Darnell Washington goes to Green Bay as a tight end three. He goes 42nd overall in this draft. So he is the 207 here. Darnell Washington gives Jordan Love that huge body. So now you have Christian Watson. Now you have Jackson Smith and Jigba. You got Romeo Dobbs behind him. You got Darnell Washington. They start piece together some some good weapons for your boy. So I like Darnell Washington a lot. But him dropping into the second round puts him a tier below the Kincaids, the Michael Mayers, who are, you know, first round guys. After Darnell Washington at 19, we're actually dipping all the way down into the bottom of the third round. Izzy Abanacanda, okay, goes to the Cincinnati Bengals, 92nd overall. So he's my 20th pick here. I think the Joe Mixon is just, I think his time in Cincinnati is done, which means they need a starting running back. And if you're a starting running back tethered to Joe Burrow in this Cincinnati offense, you're going to be good. You're going to be really good, even if you're not really good as a player. But Izzy has been one of the biggest risers throughout the combine pro day process with his blend of size, speed, and all that kind of stuff. So Izzy down 
at the end of the third round to Cincinnati is the 208 for me. I think you can argue that he should go higher. Uh, 21st overall is Cedric Tillman going to the Jacksonville Jaguars. He was picked in the second round, 56th overall. I like Cedric Tillman a lot as a prospect. Uh, the landing spot is a little bit dicey because you have Calvin Ridley, you got Christian Kirk, you got a lot of weapons there that you already like. But I think overthinking this would be stupid, right? Just if you have a prospect that you like, and now he is tethered to Trevor Lawrence, who is going to go crazy this year for his entire rookie contract. Don't overthink it. There will be opportunities for him to explode. So I'll go in on Cedric Tillman there. At the 209, we took Zach Evans. He was the RB5 in this draft. He goes third round, 74th overall to, again, my Atlanta Falcons. So we are starting to put together a nice little young group of offensive players. Now, might be kind of like a reach given the fact that we have Tyler Algier here, but I like Zach Evans as a runner. I think he brings a lot of good to the field, and this is serious draft capital. So if you have Tyler Algier and he hit last year, and then you go ahead and take Zach Evans earlier than you did Algier, I think that kind of speaks to something that they're trying to build here, which is kind of precarious, I guess, but again, not going to overthink it. Third round cap, give me that all day. Next pick at the 211, Chase Brown went five picks after Zach Evans did in this draft. He goes 79th overall to the Arizona Cardinals, the sixth running back drafted in this draft class. Chase Brown is an incredibly athletic running back. Uh, Arizona's probably in a very clear rebuild. James Conner is going to have one more year left on his contract. So I think by like week 10, when the Cardinals are like fucking two and eight, Chase Brown is going to start getting a ton of work. And then his value is going to go and skyrocket from this year into next year. Like you'll probably be able to get Chase Brown 211, 301, and then by next year, he's going to be like an early second round value where we're going into 2024 being like Chase Brown's probably the starter in Arizona if it plays out like this. Right after those guys at the 212 wrapping up the second round, we've got my boy Sam Laporta out of Iowa, one of my favorite tight ends in this class, super underrated. He was the tight end five in this mock draft. He goes to Miami, 51st overall, so second round, good capital. You love to see it. Pair him up with a high-powered offense, good spot. All right, and then we're just going to kind of rip through the last, the, the third round of this because I've been talking for a while. At the 301, we have Marvin Mims, third round, 80th overall to Pittsburgh. I think we've just learned our lesson. Just don't, do not question. Even if I don't like Marvin Mims personally, don't question the Pittsburgh Steelers and the way that they draft wide receivers. I feel like Marvin Mims kind of fits exactly that mold. Where we're like, oh, undersized, quick, separator. I don't really like him that much. Amazing. So if Pittsburgh takes a wide receiver in the first three rounds. More often than not, they're probably going to hit. Uh, at the 302, I took Kendra Miller, who went to Chicago. One of my favorite talents in this class. He does go fourth round, so it's not great draft capital. Um, but with David Montgomery out of there, yes, he will compete with Khalil Herbert. Maybe make a nice little running back duo there on an offense that is ascending at the 303. I'll dip back into the second round. Rashi Rice went to Chicago, 61st overall. I'm not a huge fan of Rashi Rice. I think this is a weird, redundant pick. I think Rashi Rice is very similar to Chase Claypool in the style of player. So to use one to trade for Chase Claypool using a second rounder and then draft Rashi Rice with a second round pick, weird behavior, weird energy out here. But second round wide receiver, I'm cool with it. At 304, Devon A-Chain goes in the fourth round, 108th overall to the Denver Broncos. They need help with the running back. Javante Williams probably not back for a minute. Yeah, weird landing spot. If A-Chain ends up going in the fourth round, it's not going to be good news uh, from a fantasy perspective. Right after him with the 305, I took Jaden Reed. Love Jaden Reed undersized wide receiver out of Michigan State. Super good player. Super good separator. He goes to my Atlanta Falcons. 110th overall in the fourth round. Again, love the landing spot. Love what we're doing here. We got Jaden Reed. We got Zach Evans. We got Jonathan Mingo. A nice little mix of different styles of players that give this firepower to this offense. Uh, so give me Jaden Reed as a prospect I love and could be a nice number two as a wide receiver. After him, Tank Bigsby goes to Dallas. So 206. He goes 129th overall. So end of the fourth round. Not good capital, but any running back going to Dallas is going to have my attention. Uh, if they make this pick, it probably signals that Zeke is out of there and not returning. So Bigsby could be a guy that I think has a lot of upside, right? And I think uh, they franchise tag Tony Pollard. If Pollard has a, a bad year or even a great year, maybe they don't want to pay him. And then they just turn to Tank Bigsby after that. Uh, right after him, one pick in the actual mock draft later, Tyler Scott goes to Buffalo. So I'll take him at the 307. Love Tyler Scott, but at the end of the fourth round, not great capital. Love the landing spot, obviously. Goes to Buffalo. They ba they badly, badly need a wide receiver, too. After Stephon Diggs, love Tyler Scott. Don't love the cap, but I'm still in on him. At 32, we're going to dip back into the second round because we got some tight ends. And I took uh, Luke Musgrave at the 208, who goes in the second round, 
47th overall to Washington. Washington uses their tight ends at a very high volume. Don't love Luke Musgrave. Reminds me of Mike Kosicki where it's more athleticism than actually being good at playing football. But, you know, 47th overall, it's top 50 capital. Not really going to overthink it. Uh, next up at the 309, Tucker Craft also goes in the second round. He goes to Detroit, who obviously traded away TJ Hawkinson, so they need a tight end to fill the void there in Detroit. And uh, Tucker Craft, second round capital, interesting spot. I haven't seen him go this high, so that's so that's interesting. In this mock, you have six tight ends going within the top 55 picks. And that's why people are saying to wait on him, man, because you could get these second round tight ends. Sam Laporta, I took at 24. We have Tucker Craft and Luke Musgrave at 32 and 33. Like, you can really, really wait on these guys and still get a tight end with great capital, a tight end with great athleticism, a tight end with great landing spots. Like, that's what all of these guys are. After 33, we are at the 310, Kayshawn Bodie. I'll take 34th overall. He is the wide receiver 12 drafted in this class. Third round, 89th overall to the New York Giants. Obviously, a wide open depth chart there. And that was their first pick of wide receiver. Uh, a lot of mock drafts have guys like JSN going to them at like 25th overall or wherever they are in the first round. They didn't do that. Keishon Booty was a first wide receiver that they picked in this draft. So he'll have every opportunity to be the guy. Uh, the more I've researched Booty, the less and less I've actually liked him as a player. Uh, reception perception was not very kind to him either, I don't believe. I think they had his profile up there. Um, but opportunity can make all the difference here. At the 311, Parker Washington, my boy out of Penn State, lands in Baltimore, 86th overall, third round capital. So three spots before Keishon Booty was drafted. Parker Washington, phenomenal slot wide receiver. Now I'm thinking about it. It, for some fucking reason, Rashad Bateman was in my dream last night. Why was Rashad Bateman in my dream last night? I don't remember. I remember him catching like a deep ball and scoring a touchdown. That's weird shit. Maybe that's maybe that's a sign. I don't know what sign that could possibly be as it relates to Parker Washington, but he'll be my 311. I uh, don't love the landing spot, obviously. The passing offense is not high volume, but I like the player a lot. And with the 312, the last pick of this mock draft, I will take Tank Dell going to Carolina at the end of the third round. He is the 93rd overall pick. You pair C.J. Stroud with Tank Dell. Obviously, this wide receiver core in Carolina is disgusting now that DJ Moore is out of the way. So you can very well make his way to being, uh, you know, a 60, 70, 80% snap guy. Extremely undersized, not as fast as we thought he would, but Tank Dell's a really fun player. Nathaniel Dell. If you go check out his tape, it feels like you're watching like a, a high school highlight tape, like rivals.com. You're like, this dude is just built differently than the rest of the dudes. Like he's going to be really good at the next level. That's kind of the way that Tank Dell feels. So third round draft capital, I'm cool with it. 312, going to Carolina. Pair him up with Stroud, and that's a wrap. Uh, the only dudes I didn't draft that were skill players that were in this were Zach Kuntz going to Houston in the third round. Aiden O'Connell, a quarterback, goes in the third round to Detroit. I don't even know who that is, but third round capital for a quarterback is usually not a good sign. Uh, the rest of them are fourth round players. A.T. Perry goes to Arizona in the fourth. Xavier Hutchinson goes to Green Bay in the fourth. Eric Gray, running back, goes to Kansas City in the fourth. Luke Schoonmaker goes to Jacksonville, tight end. And Davis Allen, another tight end, goes to the Rams in the fourth. So we'll put a recap up of all the picks I made. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you want me to do more like this, we'll be doing more mock drafts with other people coming onto the channel. Usually we do that every Monday, but I don't have any friends and no one wanted to hang out with me this week. So next week we will have, I want to say, I think Andy from Footballers is coming on for a rookie mock draft. Uh, we'll have Alex Crusoe, not the basketball player. I wish it was the basketball player, but we'll settle for the second best Alex Crusoe that I know and the only other Alex Crusoe that I know. All right, if you enjoyed the video, Hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Go eat some fucking dinner rolls. Go join the Discord. And I'll see y'all tomorrow.